the bankruptcy of discernment has gotten many to a point where they are not flexible and they do not understand what God is doing. It is true that you have never seen a child prophesy, but one day your child of four years old can look at you and say, Daddy, don't do business with that man. Go and pray for two hours. And it does not make sense. His age, you are used to matured elderly people with ministerial pedigree speaking to you. But God decides to use an earthen vessel that does not make sense. And yet the most powerful prophetic instruction in your life may come from that child. If you are a king and you are looking for a prophet and you ignore the slave girl, you may never find the prophet. You must know how to hear the king the prophet but you must also know how to hear the slave girl because sometimes it's the advice from the slave girl that connects you to elisha are we together now say discernment one more time say discernment there are times that you are preparing to go and do business or go and do whatever and the spirit of god constrains you and in that constraint watch this in that constraint something begins to happen to you watch what happens to you you begin to have a feeling go for a three-day fasting listen can i tell you sometimes it will it does not make sense to anybody including you Just the foolishness of obeying god you go and lock yourself first day nothing happens you just keep praying lord you ask me to come here second day nothing happens by the third day a veil that did not open for your grandfather a veil that did not open for your father that vista into the prophetic destiny of the family just opens and god says this is the reason why everybody has failed in your family this is the reason why people did not rise even though they were missionaries correct this adjust this step into this eternal covenant and this consecration and you will emerge out of nowhere and men who do not understand this thing will say from whence did you come we we do not know know you in this fashion discernment you have been taught that businessmen don't pray they just think but the formula designed for your own advancement because of the field wherein you have found yourself you will pray as if you're a prayer warrior and yet you're a businessman it is a strategy for your victory flexibility 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 discernment the bible says and of the sons of issachar men who had an understanding of the times and they knew what israel ought to do as a result the heads of them were 200 and all their brethren were at their command i always want to make reference respectfully speaking about 10 maybe 15 years or so ago the lord spoke to me i i shared this with with every sense of responsibility and he told me that the next decade of the church as at then that it would not just be by sales of tapes and cds i remember and he said to take our audio materials as raw as it is and to put it in the internet through the social media platforms in their infancy not the best of production but he said my angel will take it to the nations and this is how i'll announce you the flexibility to do it for someone god is following an unusual path with you just because you are alone does not mean you are wrong did you hear what i said just because you are alone does not mean you are wrong just because you are alone does not mean you are wrong this is a word for someone just because you are alone alone in prayer alone in giving alone in the sacrifice everybody has gotten a job except you just because you are alone they don't know what you are confronting there are eight long altars that have vowed that nobody rises and god is submitting you do you know there are many things that god calls us to do that in doing them the benefit is beyond ourselves is you are looking through the loins of prophecy and you are seeing your children and your children's children and he's saying for their sake go on the fast for their sake build capacity Elijah you are a prophet but eat the journey is far you'd have no idea where you are going he ate a little and he slept he woke him again he said eat 
it means pray it means study it means get knowledge it means build the relationships now you don't know how far you are going you may not have the luxury of this man you are seeing now invest in relationships invest in prayer a time will come the demand of the nations upon you you will not even have time to stretch as much as you used to you will drink from the residue of your investment this is the place of encounter do to me what you want this is the place of surrender do to me what you want this is the place where my life is changed Listen, I will share with you something to bless your heart. Do you know how I finally settled here in Abuja? For three years, God began to speak to me that the season, a dimension of my ministry and my work was coming to an end. And for three years, I didn't know whether it was Abuja, whether it was just, I just kept praying that dissatisfaction. I loved Zaria with all my heart. I was used to that. I mean, people were coming literally from all over the world. It was at a point of ministry excellence and results like you have not seen and yet god was saying this is just a layer there is another layer remember ye not the former things you can like yesterday too much you will lose tomorrow because of yesterday listen i returned back from i think south africa had a meeting in lagos COVID was just about to start now abuja has always been second home but not for ministry I didn't know whether it was Abuja, whether it was, it was just perhaps maybe among my people to just go. But where I, it was just in my heart. I knew I was having visions. They were not yet clear. You don't, it does not become clear from the beginning. It is not an unusual experience you are having. That's how we all pass through it. Anybody who understands building prophetic destiny, anything that comes with clarity from beginning is a sign that you are in error. God will always demand faith. There is a sign to that vision that will be hidden. It's your commitment that will cause him to unravel it. God is a God that hides himself in light. He will give you an experience and hide it back to draw you. Moses, he sees a bush that is burning but not consumed and yet it does not have any sound. And then he says, I will turn aside and see this great sight. And when God saw that he now turned aside, he said, Moses, take off your shoes. It's not about the burning bush. There is more, but I needed to use it to get your attention. Hallelujah. Please play the strings for me. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, what I'm teaching you by the Spirit of God, I'm giving you a compass to navigate the days that are now before us because there will be a divergence. Respectfully speaking, you will find out that many, many lampstands will suddenly go down and then others from nowhere. Yet there are those that will remain burning because of the intelligence to discern and to navigate prophetic seasons just because you were greatly demanded of and for yesterday does not mean the demand will remain tomorrow the sustainability of impact in the kingdom is predicated upon your ability to discern seasons he made lights and those lights were for seasons and for years discernment i remember I returned from Lagos and then I left for London. We were about the last set of people to leave London. As I came to Abuja, I think preparing to rush back to Zaria for a miracle service or somewhere, that was when they announced the lockdown, the global lockdown. Ladies and gentlemen, that lockdown you see, that was it all. I said, no, there has to be a reason. Lord, what am I going to do with myself now? If I had left, I was considering using another flight. I would have been trapped in London for three months, roaming around the streets of London. But then God brought me. And as soon as I came, I know that God is a God of purpose. And I just said, okay, my people, God bless you. 
when COVID is over, we'll have our time. It was that time. Finally, Lord, is it Abuja? Is it, is it just? Is it where? And I was praying and the spirit of prayer came upon me. And it was at that time I just saw the map of Abuja. I said, that is it. The Lord instructed me to buy the map of Abuja, the map of Nigeria, the map of Africa, and the map of the world. I got these four maps and I was praying like a madman. Do you have the discernment and the flexibility to receive the prophetic blueprint for the next level? Which venue would be used? That one is another story. Where the people will come from, that is another story. Hmm. Hallelujah. Hmm. I began to pray, laying hands on those maps every day, praying. Lord, when you give the word, great is the company of them that publish it. I may not see the wind. I may not see rain. Yet the valley shall be filled with water. Mine is to pray. Mine is to prepare. The Bible says when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you. Holy Spirit, this is what you are meant for. Now I yield myself to you. Direct the course of my life. When you see any man looking like a sign and a wonder, let me tell you, they have only learned how to move with the wind. The Bible says the wind blows where it listed you cannot tell where it's going nor where it's coming for somebody God can just call you you have been fasting for every day but that one day fast is where the blueprint of your destiny will be revealed but do you have the flexibility the flexibility the flexibility it was time to turn water to wine the Bible says the wine finished and then they came mary led them to jesus watch this and jesus said are you sure you really want new wine yes we want new wine embarrassment is imminent he said all right be ready to do what you've never done get six pots never has wine been formed that way no wine is formed through fermentation is that true and now he's using another formula and then they filled six pots. He said, fetch it. Don't taste it. Don't verify. Just be on your way. The Bible says, as they went, in shame. What if nothing happened? Do you know they would have killed them at that point? In a fifth embarrassment is there, you now come and add to it. But as they went, in the foolishness of obedience, a miracle began to happen. The Bible says, when the rulers tasted it, they said, ah, what is this? People bring their best wine at first. That means there is a kind of wine the church has not tasted. Ah, there is a kind, we, we thank God for our fathers. We thank God for generals, both in the Bible and in history. But I assure you by the authority of scripture, there is a kind of wine that must be tasted before his majesty returns. And there are men and women, ordinary men, ordinary psalmists, ordinary prophets, ordinary apostles, ordinary businessmen. Listen, we don't know how to make wine, but we know how to carry it. Ah, we can carry it to nations. We are not the ones making the wine, but we can carry the wine. We can carry the wine. We can carry it to nations. We can carry it across the globe. And no power in existence sustains what it takes to stop the transference of that wine. The wine is not from us. We are not manufacturers of wine. We only take it to the rulers of the earth. This is the place of surrender. Do to me what you want This is the place of encounter Do to me what you want This is the place where my life is changed Do to me what you want Hear me when you read John chapter 2 and verse 11, it leaves us with a powerful statement. It says, this beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee 
and manifested forth his glory and the disciples believed on him what was the miracle to find ordinary men who started with water and then as they went the water turned to wine and they served the nations you would think the credit will go to the men of god i say it again everyone you taste that is unusual was not manufactured by joshua selman was not manufactured by koinonia the songs that you hear men and women like minister dunsin sing it we don't manufacture them we only take them as and serve them to the nations the formula listen the formula when it has to do with working with god creativity is not required it is alignment and obedience it is when we have to do with invading the cosmos that is when we bring creativity when it has to do with god your creativity is not important it is your alignment and your obedience then when you receive from his presence you now add creativity to that which you have received hallelujah behold i do a new thing you want to navigate prophetic seasons in your life you must understand the power of the new the first key is discernment and flexibility let me give you the second very quickly the second key when you want to experience new things in your life is that you will need strength and courage strength and courage <laughs> Joshua chapter 1 please 5 to 7 strength and courage there is nobody who is able to explore virgin dimensions in the spirit and become men of power and stature when you do not understand strength and courage Joshua 1 5 to 7 1 5 to 7 one five to seven thank you there shall not any man be able to stand before thee speaking to joshua all the days of your life i hope you know he had never assumed leadership in this capacity the bible starts by saying moses my servant is dead get over it i love moses i use moses but that formula is dead good things can die it's not only evil that can die god is a god of evolution and transition as far as his work with the saints is concerned there are many good things he may need to shelve because there are greater things coming it is not only evil or bad things that are thrown aside as i was with moses so i will be with thee i will not fail thee nor forsake you verse 6 he says be strong he's speaking to a man who is about to assume enormous office a, 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 an office that would demand i mean the continuity the manifestation of prophecy depend on his leadership and yeah he's speaking to the people no idea of the battles that were before him and joshua was told to be strong and of a good courage for unto these people shall thou divide for an inheritance i hope you know the inheritance is talking about hard giants there and yet god did not even he was talking as if the giants were already dead share the inheritance which i swear unto the fathers to give you seven only be thou strong and if and very courageous be strong be very courageous can i tell you men who will understand navigate and excel as far as the prophetic shift that is happening is concerned are people who have strength strength and courage courage to stand alone courage to be controversial <clears throat> you cannot be agreeable and step into prophecy hallelujah he comes to meet a young lady minding her business preparing for her marriage and he says young lady you have found favor with god blessed are you among all women you would think after that blessing she should be announced she should be he called it favor i've studied mary's life from that journey until jesus i still don't know what is favor in that statement 
I understand giving birth to Jesus, but the controversies that surrounded Mary from that time, Joseph wanted to quietly leave her. She was about to lose her marriage, lose her life, and yet God calls that favor. So pain can be favor. There are moments that it does not look like it and yet God calls it favor. Be careful what you call what, what is happening to you. Ask God for the name to use for it because you can see pain that is a ladder for your ascendance and you call it pain but God calls it favor. You would see Jesus dying on the cross. You call that death but he calls that the path to victory. Today when we go to heaven, we don't just use crowns to know Jesus because there are men and elders who have crowns but when everybody lifts his hand the one who has the scar that which was a, an emblem of shame today is the symbol that is that is the signature of his majesty when jesus appeared he he said to thomas's doubting not by saying look at my head he said put your hand so the scars the nails you would have seen him three, four days ago and you would have assumed that such a weak Jesus, the foolish man at the other side of the cross, you heard what the guy was saying too. And the other one rebuked him and said, we are criminals here for a just reason. This man has not done anything. So don't call your lack of food. It's not poverty. It's not always poverty. You may be calling it poverty. God is calling it training training for where he's taking you so that you will learn how to abound you will learn how to do it plenty and with nothing are we together now believers must learn how to interpret the writings of the world from the lens of the spirit otherwise you will lose prophetic seasons because they do not come in an appearance that you are used to you need courage say courage you need strength yes the bible says by the strength of an ox is much good gotten the strength of an ox you see how an ox plows the field for hours yet it is making the ridges the strength of an ox is what you will need in this end time there are times you have to stand alone for many years before others join you there are times you have to see ahead of every other person maybe in your family maybe in your business and literally be there for a long time before people begin to join you one by one do you have the courage to be alone we believe the word of the lord has come your way we believe you have been changed we believe you can never remain the same after listening and being blessed by the word of the lord don't forget to hit the subscribe button and also share this message with your family and friends so that you too can be blessed god bless you